Hello, dear YouTubers. My name is Mendy van Goeie and I am a Dutch artist illustrator and I, you probably know me from watercolour reviews I often do on YouTube. Um, recently I set up a Patreon and um, on the Patreon I do vlogs and demos of my work which is watercolour illustrations, watercolour art, um, mostly or very often combined with mixed media. Um, this September I'm starting um, a project on my Patreon in which I want to do a year-long project together with my patrons so they can paint along with me. Um, for that project, I would very much like it if everyone worked in their own little book, in their own watercolour sketchbook. And um, as of September, I will talk about that a lot and show how you can make a book for yourself um, and how you can make the book really yours, make it look like a world that belongs to you and a world that you can work in. Um, and today I present a little um, vlog about those sketchbooks that I make myself. Um, it's very hard to purchase a watercolour sketchbook that fits my needs. I need pretty heavy paper because most of my technique is wet in wet watercolour and most watercolour sketchbooks have very thin paper. So I've decided to create my own books. So in this video you will see me talk about um, some of the sketchbooks that I make and the things you can do and how lovely it is to make your own watercolour sketchbooks. So it's highly enjoyable for everyone who likes book binding and who likes, you know, working in a sketchbook. I think the biggest advantage of working in a sketchbook is that it is your private world. It is for you alone. So that's where you can grow. That's where you can experiment boundlessly and you don't have to show anyone if you don't want to. Also, because it's in a book, there's no pressure. It doesn't have to be on a museum wall. It doesn't have to be for sale. You can always make a print, of course, if you want to. But there is so much liberty within the confinement of two covers. So check out this video if you're interested. And um, you can sign up for my newsletter. Of course, you can also um, visit my Patreon and see if there is something there for you. And um, as of September will be starting the work along project. It's going to be watercolour techniques. Um, it's going to involve a lot of the techniques that I use in my art. It's going to be illustration, but all based on a year long theme. And um, if you want to keep um, up to date, then um, sign up for the newsletter or uh, my Patreon. Hey there, my name is Mindy van Goeie. I am a Dutch artist illustrator. I work with watercolour mainly, but I love adding in mixed media, everything I can find basically. Um, this time I'm doing a little um, vlog slash demo. I do a video every week. Every other week there will be a video on YouTube with either a review, a vlog or a demo. And those videos will be placed on my Patreon without ads. Um, and every other week I will do um, a more extended video about my art making um, on Patreon in which I give a lot of information um, about the supplies I'm working with but also the techniques, how my work comes together and it's not exactly a tutorial but if you want to learn things um, about making art with watercolour then that certainly is a very good place to start. Right, today I'm going to do a little demo this is a paint stain that I just made and it's almost dry, dry enough to work on. So I will um, paint something in that. Um, and um, I can tell you just a little bit about, I don't know if you see it, my studio has changed a bit. Um, my drawing table is back behind me. Um, it used to be in the back of my studio on that side, on the far end of my studio. Um, but the thing is right now, my camera you can't see it my camera hangs on a contraption that we made for overhead filming which is really great it was a videographer who gave me some really good advice and um but this is really great for overhead filming but 
I'm going to be binding some new um, watercolour sketchbooks soon and um, I've got some I've, I've collected some really lovely some really lovely things that I want to show you there's going to be some wood involved this time um let me see I don't have an example here right now but sometimes I um incorporate um little things in my in the covers of my journal um, and this time it's a little chip of cherry wood and what's so very special about this cherry wood is that this um my father-in-law cut this chip for me um this is the chip this is from the cherry tree in their garden um they pruned it severely as you can see and um well it no longer smells like cherry wood maybe if it gets warm i'm not sure sometimes you can smell it but he polished it for me and he made it super thin he's a he's a carpenter by trade so he knows his skills and what i can do with it is i can really incorporate this into in the cover of a book and i'm going to do that in a really special way so what i thought i would do because you know um when you love painting with watercolour i don't know some people like to paint on single sheets um i actually prefer painting in books um but that means i've got a lot of books and also it's kind of hard to find books that really suit my needs um because i like working wet in wet so the paper has to be very strong and shouldn't buckle too much well you know these moleskin watercolour books are pretty okay but they are very small and you can only, you know, landscape is quite wide and portraits quite high. Um, so, and, and the paper is kind of thin. And I've also discovered that when you paint on it with um, gouache, um, that the gouache will stay on top of the paper. And when you close the book, it will start rubbing a bit. It always does when you pick it up and you, you move it around, you, you put it in a bag or something, the paper starts to smudge the other side. So you can only work on one side of the, um, of the paper, which is kind of a pity. So what I do is I have the Canson Monval. I always buy that in, in, in really big amounts, large sheets, and I cut them to size and then I make a little book with them. Oh, I was going to see if I could find a book. Maybe I can show you this one. Hold on. I didn't exactly prepare this. Can you tell? <laughs> I love filming on the fly. Um, this is a book I made some time ago. So this is, um, I don't know what the binding is called. If I remember correctly, Belgian binding or something I'm not sure but I sort of I figured it out myself and then um, I had a little problem and then I looked up um, such a binding scheme and I en ended up with um, a workshop um, about this binding only there was a little problem um, in the back side of the book in the original binding the back side of the book could escape so what I did is I made some little adjustments by adding extra stitches to the top and the back. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but that made that made this a really good binding. So first page. A very awful, I don't like the apple um, paper, but it's on there because these little chunks are apple wood. Um, it's from an apple tree we used to have in our garden and I painted them very lightly. So, but look, this is my crafting skills, my grand, my father-in-law's crafting skills. Well, he's good with wood and I'm good with um, paper and paint. And by the way, if you like this binding, don't use it for your watercolor sketchbook. Um, the reason being that you can't lay the book flat. It doesn't, it, 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 the, the back of the book, the spine is rather sturdy. And um, I need to figure out if there is a way I can do this again for the net for another book. Because, well, okay, that being said, you could try it if you like it. Um, but I really like Coptic Stitch. 
um, which is an open binding like hold on <laughs> I'll show you now that I'm showing in my books anyway um this is another book I I uh, bound with a piece of horse leather on there no I did it's not my own horse I didn't kill my own horse um but this is I don't I don't remember where I got this but what I do is um when I go to, I go to thrift shops a lot and flea markets and I'll go for the really cheap stuff so if I see like um a leather bag or um well not shoes but sometimes boots they have the long shaft so if they sell them for a, for a euro or something I'll buy them I'll just rip them apart and I'll throw away all the parts I can't use. But I try to take as much of the stuff out of there. Um, I don't know if this comes from such um, a repurposing project. I've no idea. The book is repurposing. The covers are actually from a book. And the insides I keep um, to, um, to make all kinds of... Can I show you what I do with the insides too? Hold on. So this is going to be a vlog, right? Not a demo. You'll get it. The demo is going to be for Patreon. The vlog's going to be for YouTube. Let me see if I can find. Yes. Um, this is what I do with the pages of such books. And this is, by the way, also a book that I bound myself. But this is what I do with such books. So I don't throw, I don't throw anything away. You know, I take things apart and I, I do something with them like here so this is like poetry that I make with paint from from pages of the books don't even know what this is about it's Dutch so um I can't really read that to you but it's like making a graphic poem making them look really neat so that's what I do a lot right that's so but the outside of the book this is Coptic stitch that I was talking about and what's really fantastic is you can you can open it flat every page you open will be flat so and that's really really wonderful and this is my canson monvel paper these are the last pages i did in this book but you can they've been i think maybe they've been on instagram and i did these two ladies in there too so this is like my sketchbook for you know I love working in my sketchbook. This is, it's not just to relax or it's playtime. Um, it's my experimenting time. There's a lot of notes in here as well. Oh, this one you may know from Instagram as well. So I sometimes photograph, I don't photograph everything. Oh, right. Mm. This is inspired by Basquiat. I've got, I bought a book by uh, on, on Basquiat's work and I really like the um, I like what it did for me I don't know if I can show this got some nudity in it but just you know tenderly not not something horrible if you don't like nudity close your eyes for um, say what five seconds and if you don't mind nudity you can look this is um this just happened I didn't plan anything here I just started drawing and all of a sudden this is what came out so was it five seconds didn't I scare anyone with some nudity okay and things like this um, <laughs> it's got diary text in it so I'm not showing everything but so ink drawings as well so but anyway so this is a really big book this is a really big chunky book and it's not very big in format the size is not very big but you know Coptic stitch is just super wonderful if you do it neatly if you um you, it's it's always with Coptic stitch it's, you shouldn't sew it too tightly but you should also not sew it too loosely if you do it loosely your book will move you know this side um to that side will be very I don't know will move like this very much and it will start to um how do you say that I don't know the, the English word for that but um but it's just not good so it's Coptic stitch don't be surprised if you've never done it before um that maybe you might have to 
you know, try this a couple of times before you have a book you really like. But what's really great about Coptic Stitch is when you cut loose the stitches in the backside, you can sew it again. So um, that is a really great idea. And this has been sewed with waxed, um, uh, waxed, um, what's it called? Waxed linen, I think. Um, that's really sturdy and that's really good for sewing um, watercolour paper. I always work, my, my chapters have, I think, three sheets each. Yes. So that's what I usually do and I never cut them. You know, some people who work super neatly, you know, here the sheets are not all very much aligned because when you fold, when you cut the same size paper and you stack them, and you put pun you punch the holes in the middle and you fold them then when you fold them you will see that the middle pages will uh, stick out just a little bit and then the the pages uh you know that are around them will stick out a little bit less and then the ones on the outside will stick out a little bit less so you've got this sort of you know exaggerated with an exaggerated few you could say it's like um a, a triangle sticking out um well, you can cut that. Um, I do. I actually do have a cutter to do so, but I really like how this feels. Um, and also, um, can you see that? I want to. I want to make the camera focus on that. But this is like deckled edges. Can you see that? It's because I tear my paper. Um, because I like it. I like the. It's not like, you know, creating something that's got a sense of history, or age. It's like. This already looks a bit scruffy and when something looks not too neat, it's much easier for me because this is like a really luxurious book, right? I mean, it's got the leather, it's got this closure, um, it's got the clasp, I mean, it's got the golden print on it. Um, you know, this is a luxurious sketchbook. If you got some, if, if someone gives you this as a present, oh my God, you know, it's like getting some, getting a treasure. Um, but by making the edges like this, um, that's just really fantastic. There is another thing you can do, by the way. Um, some people who bind books, you know, it takes quite a bit of time. Sometimes you literally spoil blood, especially with this one, because when you're sewing, you sew Coptic stitch with a curved um, needle. And everyone who sews with curved needles knows that, I don't know if you can see that, but I punched my own finger, I punched my fingers a couple of times um, with the last attempt that I did, which was this one, um, that I I cut up an old, um, an old book for, an old accounting book that I found in the attic. So I cut it uh, for the covers. And um, this is for um, a Hendrik Drescher workshop that I did. Um, or that I'm, I'm doing because I'm, I'm not finished yet. It's interfering too much with projects I am working on, which is my Patreon. So I, I'm not going to finish it now, but I did finish the book. I don't know if you guys can see it. It smells incredibly like glue stick. <laughs> but um, so this is kind of uh, interesting. I did a couple of little drawings in them. I don't know if I can find them. Yeah, this is something I did in them. This is like like play and experimentation that I do on the side as well. Um, if I have time, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time right now, but I really enjoy binding the book. And I bang this one, also Coptic Stitch, but I made a more, um, I sewed this with cotton, cotton uh, yarn, and I um, fortified the binding a bit. Um, but still, it's kind of, it moves. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, there's a little bit more movement in there. But this is really nice to do, to repurpose stuff and make books from that. So people around me know by now that if they have something really great, they should send it to me and I'll turn it into a book. Well, for myself, not, not for the whole world. It's incredibly expensive making your own watercolour journals. I mean, the paper alone, the paper alone in this one was six sheets of watercolour paper. So that boils down to about 24 something euros. And um, that's that's quite a bit of money, right? That's not something you do. Um, here is something I also do. This is um, 
where I made, um, this is also a bound book, but it's got two spines, as you can see. No, it's just got one spine and a flap. And it's got a little key. And this is a repurposed key that I've got, I took it. I remember I either found it or I took it when I was much younger. So I actually use it as a lock. This, this, this is a key and a lock. So what I did is with bookbinding linen, now I have to, I can't do it in this position, sorry guys, but it's like, <laughs> I can't do it at all. <laughs> I sewed it on too tightly. No, there was a way of me, yeah, here it comes. Okay, so you can take out the key and then you can open up the book to two sides. So there is here, this is the spine, this is the side where I sewed it. This is a super simple binding. This is basically a pamphlet stitch that you um, sew through a binding. So that's super, super simple and very sturdy. And you can make it as big as you like. So you can also make big presentation albums um, with this technique if you like. And I started out doing some experimenting, I see, with um, with gouache. It's kind of fun. And so I cut out this hole and <laughs> I fortified the hole with a bit of bookbinding linen. And I fortified... This, this here is not really a cover. This is just the same paper, the same watercolour paper. But since it's... Um, 140 pounds Canton Monval watercolor paper, you can use that as, um, you know, uh, as your cover. But then you do have to try and fortify um, the back side, the, 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 the back of the book and um, flaps if you, if you have them. And I fortify them both in and outside, and then you stitch them. So, and this is gonna be a dirty book, right? I kept it white and I'm not painting it. Um, people have asked me, aren't you going to paint it? And I said, no, this is something that time is going to paint. You know, it's going to have patina on it, if you will. And this is going to be dirty from, you know, I might, I might, you know, throw it over the floor some, sometime. No, I won't. I don't do such things. I've seen, I've seen videos of women dragging their journals behind them in the road. And I'm like, why would you do that? Unless, of course, it means something to you. But it's not that important to me to make it look weathered and old. I'd rather have it weather and age in my own stack of books. And I'd rather, you know, right now I have a really dirty um, worktop because I haven't cleaned it this week yet. Um, so there will be little dots of paint on there. And when you rub your paper over it, it'll probably stain. So I prefer to, to, to have it stain on its own. So yes, I'm going to bind another book. And that is why, don't think I don't come back to where I started, because I actually remember this time, more chuffed about it than I actually do remember. Because I started talking about that drawing table behind me there. That's going to be my workstation. That was my workstation already for bookbinding, amongst others, because I can do it standing up. But also what's really great is that the, the table used to be against the wall. And it was very, very hard for me to film myself making a book because I can't film overhead with binding books. Um, I can, but it's it's a big thing. I move around a lot, so I want it to uh, to have another way of, of of showing that. I want it to be able to film it from the front. So that's what I'm going to try now. I'm going to try and do, and I think I might. I think I might bind this one, or else I found a little bit of bark. That I'm going to use. I like, I don't know why, but this is such a really, it's so thin, it's just as thin as this one. So I'm going to also bind a book with this one in, in the cover somehow. Um, I'm looking forward to that so much. I know exactly how I'm going to do it. Just as with this one. This is going to be, this is going to be really great. Although I'm going to have to I'm not going to leave it as it as is. I'm going to change it a little bit. I hope my father-in-law doesn't mind. This one is going to be as is. Looking forward to it. And I've got so much more. I've actually got, got you know, like um, a box full of, full of findings like these. 
So I'm going to bind my own books and I'm, I'm almost out of space in my book. So that's why I need, because um, in, the, in, in the red one that I just showed you, these are the last two I did in there. These date from March, but I've been working in other journals since. Um, but all that's left is this. And once I get going, I always do more pages in a day. Once I get going, I can't stop anymore. So it's usually like three, three or four paintings a day that I do. So this is not going to be a whole lot. It's going to be six, 12. No, this is 16 pages. So this can be full in four days which is why I really need new ones and of course you know the moleskins are really great just to 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 try and you know <sighs> but anyway I was gonna do a demo and now I have now I did a vlog about my my uh, journals which is great too I think I think it's very interesting to see um the books people work in and and what they make and how they make them and um it is super inspiring to see um, how people work, I think. And with bookbinding, you know, this is just like a whole different art. And I love the integration of them, of them both. Because, you know, when you're painting on paper, you're making a painting. It feels naked somehow, because it's like a standalone object. But once you open a book, you open a world, it's, it's confined, it's it's sort of like a secure space. It's like the place where something happens. And I also find that, you know, to be very honest with you, this moleskin doesn't inspire me. The book itself doesn't inspire me. The moment I work in this book, I feel different. So the paintings I do in this book really turn out differently than the ones I do in this one. So it's, it's like an interaction. Working in a book is an interaction with the book and with, with the outsides of the book, with the feel of the book, with the love and the attention you put into that book. And then, and also the drawings you make in them. It's all like they, they conjure up this, this feeling, this, this, I don't know. When you step into someone's house, Within seconds or within a split second, you know, you know something you can't really paraphrase, but you know something. You feel that. You feel comfortable or you don't. Or you feel confused. You know, but that's a very clear thing. And you can, you can also feel something is exciting or, and, and that's, that's what, what I think this book does. It's like you, every book that you open, is like stepping into a house and feeling what's in there. So these, the only downside of it is that um, I've been asked a few times if I wanted to um, make an exhibition of my work and um, I want to, but the problem is that um, these books, um, I use my books chronologically but I, I skip, I go back and forth between books because this one hasn't been used since March. But I go back and forth in the books, but I use them chronologically and I put everything in there. I also um, have a lot of uh, very personal stories in my books. Some of those are, you know, once they're on paper, they're not recognisable for anyone. What's there, some are very recognisably stories of mine that feel too personal or sometimes people are involved and then I think it's just not fair to show that to the world. So I have a problem sometimes when people ask me if I want to show my work because I, I would like to exhibit my work but digitally because <laughs> I don't want to take all my books somewhere. That's also another thing, you know, to take your books somewhere to a venue and say, okay, I'll just leave them there. That's a, that's a whole scary thing <laughs> so yeah at some point you have to make choices so I do work on single sheets as well you can even choose to work on single sheets or on folios so it's folded sheets and then bind them later or don't bind them um, but you know working in a book um, when you're painting for yourself 
or when you're um when you want to be an artist and when you want to make a lot of art and you want to get better or even if you don't want to become an artist but if you just want to get better at what you do painting or drawing or writing even do it in a book you know it just tracks your progress automatically and don't don't look back don't look back too quickly but just do what you do and then at some point in time put away the book and and just leave it be and then after a few years go back or after a year or so go back to to see that what you can do now is so much better than what you did a year ago um because you will see progress because just by doing it you will get better but also what's super super um surprising what you will also see is that when you thought you couldn't do that much you were probably capable of doing a lot with the little you could do and you will see that not being able to do the things you want to do will make you creative because you'll have to work around it. So you will find some original things in your older work that you, when you go back, sometimes you didn't, you don't expect anymore. That's what I find. I can draw and paint a lot better than I could 12, 15 years ago. But when I go back to my older sketchbooks, I have to say, that sometimes I'm jealous of the originality I had of visualizing things that I wasn't able to draw at the time that I can draw now and then they they become cliche much more quickly. So I think as an artist, it's good to see that progress and, and you only see the progress in a book. You don't see the progress in single sheets or you should have a really good and very meticulous archive if you do that too and you never ever change the order of your your paintings and your drawings then you can track your own progress as well but otherwise it's just impossible because you know loose sheets they will they will 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 you know they will be changing orders some will go to exhibitions maybe some will be seen by people maybe one or two will be on the wall and then you chuck them all back together and they will always change orders so it's going to be much more difficult to track your own progress but um it's just something about working in a book that's just it's wonderful and everyone who asks me or ask me how do i find my own style work make work do it in a book and look at yourself look at your own work and see the things you can do and we t we if you're artistically inclined and you want to become better, we tend to only see the things we can't do in comparison to others. And the thing is that there is so much that we can do that really deserves a lot of attention. So yes, I think that my what I meant to become a demo has become a plea for binding your own watercolour sketchbooks. But please do give it a try. If you've never done it before, give it a try. You don't need that much tools for it. You need, okay, I will finish the video with this. What you need is covers. So you can do that even from cornflakes boxes. You can cut it apart and take the front and the back. If you like, you can cover that cardboard with, you know, beautiful paper or you can gesso over it and paint over it if you like. Um, it's not going to be as sturdy, but you can, you can also tear apart a very old book. Go to a thrift store or, you know, go to the attic, look up an old book. Make sure it's not a valuable book. Before you do that, yes, this is experience. I'm not going to talk about that. Shh. No one wants to know this. Before you do that, on the internet, check out if the book is valuable or not. And if it's not valuable, tear it apart. And then, um, well, you can cut out the, the, the spine of the book. And then you punch some holes in it. Um, and then you look up on the internet how you do a Coptic stitch. If you have waxed linen, that would be the best thing to work with. Although it's also challenging in a way because it's very sturdy to work with. But you know, um, a really good cotton will do the job just as well. And if you can find it, you know, a curved needle, um, that would be really, really handy for Coptic stitch binding. Um, you also need some, you need paper, of course, you need to make sure you cut and fold the paper to the size of the covers or 
I always find covers to the size of the paper that I have because I want to make optimum use of the sheets of watercolour paper because they are the most expensive. Well, and then you look up a video on YouTube, how you do a Coptic stitch. There are so many available. I did consider offering one, but come on, why should I do the work when someone's already done it? And probably better than I have because I don't do it all day. Um, and then, you know, once you've done that, you just see if you can embellish it any way you like. Well, um, because this is a black and red book with gold, I chose some, you know, the golden, uh, what's they, what they're called again? Brads. Brads? Are they brads? I don't remember. I think so. Um, and I found this one. This should have been gold, of course, but I didn't have that. This was um, an old cloak clasp that I had lying somewhere. I don't know. Where, I think I got this from the time that I made jewellery. So it was 20 years ago or something. And I had this piece of really fine horse leather lying about. Um, oh, you know what I've also got now? That's going to be, oh, that's going to be a challenge. I've got some ostrich leather that needs to go on a book someday. It's horrible stuff, by the way. And what I also have is ostrich eggs, um, uh, um, shards of ostrich eggs. Um, and that I'm going to bind a book with as well. So, yes, um, it's really good. Bookbinding is, is such, can be such a creative thing to do it's it's a hobby that's much too expensive to you know to do just for yourself and have a thousand books and it's also very it's it, it hardly seems possible to make books to sell i mean books like these if i count my hours and all the supplies you need in order to sell them and to make money of them so you can do this you know as a for a living that's just you know, i don't know i think this book would would, would, would be about 150 $150 at least, maybe even more. Who's going to pay that, right? Although, having said that, this week I ran into, I forgot the name. I will look it up if I, I will, I will try to remember and look it up. But I found this um, YouTube channel and online web shop. People selling um, journals like the, well, not as, not even as pretty as these though, um, for $460. And they actually really sell. So maybe I shouldn't think in impossibilities, but in possibility. <laughs> well, anyway, no, I'm going back to my watercolours. I'm going back to my stain. So this is going to be a demo for the Patreon now with lots and lots of explanation. And, well, a whole demo of how to go about it and to turn this into something hopefully pretty, because I don't know yet. Um, it's always a surprise to myself as well. Well, this is a long and chatty um, vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe um, because that really helps my video um, being seen by others. And um, well, if you're interested in my Patreon, then um, please go check it out. Maybe there's something for you there. Um, and this September I'm going to do a paint along or a work along project because there's also going to be a little bit of well book binding project thing involved. Um, so maybe you like to check it out and uh, see if it's for you. Even though that project is not online now because I'm going to be starting that in September. So I'm doing things one thing at a time at the moment, which is quite okay. Right, thank you very much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if this video inspires you to make your own book or to buy a really nice book by a good book binder, can you please show me? I would love to see, um, you know, what videos like these result in. And um, yes, thank you very much. And see you again in the next video. Bye.